Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes, the next plane 11. For this flight I'm going from Petropavlovsk in Russia to PASY, which is Ericsson Air Base in Alaska. And I am flying an AN-225. This is a freeware AN-225. It's, uh, well, the 3D cockpit is serviceable, but I'm probably not going to stick too long in it. I happen to know that this 3D cockpit uh, does have pressurization but I don't know actually how to change the pressurization in here. So, well, since normally for this series I'm in the exterior view, it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll just stick to the exterior view above 13,000 feet, and that's how we're going to deal with that. Uh, honestly, when the plane is started up, you know, with engines running in the game, it should be that the pressurization system is already set. Uh, normally that is set on the ground, incidentally. It's not like it's adjusted mid-flight, but yeah. Okay, anyway, that's neither here nor there. At least the external model is a little bit better. And uh, so that's the AN-225 here. And uh, well, it's uh, better looking from this side than on this side. Well, no, actually, here this side, as long as it's in broad daylight, this side looks fine. Otherwise, the shading is a little bit weird. There is uh, one other flaw, and that's the, the vertical stabilizer text Antonov Airlines is accidentally reversed on the right side. It is proper on the left side. That's just something that you have to make sure about. Of course, the front text, the International Cargo Transporter Maria and Antonov 225 is looking fine. Anyway, uh, so that is as it is. We are continuing to listen to... Oh, and for some reason the camera's tilted. Don't ask me why, but um, we'll just deal with that. It's a little bit Dutch, uh, the, the, the Dutch camera angle. Anyway, uh, no insult intended, but we are listening to the Apollo 13 audio and picking up where I think we left off. Hopefully the marker was saved properly, though I've heard this audio so many times that it always seems like I'm going over parts that I've heard before. So I actually, I, I just have to hope that it's all right. So here we go. It always is like a case of deja vu with this thing. Aquarius, uh, re request half Dominic. So, all right, here we go, throttle up. Let's see, a little bit of flaps, I think is prudent. We're not carrying a full load with this at all. So, it shouldn't be too bad. After all, it's a very sh fairly short flight. Nice view of the mountains. Of course, most of this flight is going to be over water. It's not deep into Alaska, it's like the first base that we can get to in Alaska, because the AN-225 is not particularly fast. Uh, well, at least not pa uh, not fast compared to the original planes I had for this flight leg. Originally, we were going to be going to PAAK, not PASY, not Ericsson. We were going to uh, Atka. And that would have been done... Uh, initially, I put in the SR-71 before moving it up. And then I put in the F-18, that we'll, we'll see later instead. Then I put in the Panavia Tornado, so all of them were faster planes. And, uh, but somebody requested the AN-225 and given that I d and given that there was a freeware AN-225, I decided to put it in here to seem like the most reasonable place to have it. So here we are. So instead of landing in Atka, which would be too short an airstrip, probably too short for the SR-71 as well, uh, we are going for Ericsson Air Force Base. That's E-A-R-E-C-K, I think. Spelled a little bit interestingly. R-E-C-K-S-O-N, yeah. 
Uh, so that is a nice 10,000 foot runway. Which I feel like we may need. So, Petropavlovsk. So if we do go over a part twice accidentally in the audio, forgive me for that, but I think this is where we left off. You wouldn't believe it, but I'm uh, now in command of the lift. But a lot of it seems really familiar. We're going to be going okay. over the part where Fred Hayes is uh, holding fort over the night while the other two sleep. Command module pilots, of course the command module pilot wouldn't be involved in any lunar module burn. So regardless of where he's sitting. I think that's a tape change there. Uh, uh, here now you can see on the right side what I was talking about. The left side is a little bit more pleasant, especially in the International Cargo Transporter text region. That's why I'm sticking to this side, well, and the mountains. They had uh, pretty good communications during the main burn to help them get back to Earth faster. But they're going to then reduce the quality of the communications to save power, unfortunately. So we're going to get fuzzier audio pretty soon. Incidentally, if um, the view sometimes gets a little bit choppier than it normally is, that may be because I'm clicking out to see the map. Apparently, even though x 11 doesn't appear to have a reduction in frame rates, the recording sometimes does. So, not much I can do about that. But I do need to occasionally consult a map. The photo scenery near Petrofab Pavlovitsk could do with some work, Obvious, obviously it was taken in stripes during different seasons. That's affirmative, Jim. Pull them out. Not ideal. Or different lighting conditions at least. There's a ship down there. I think that's a carrier. There are an assortment of carriers wandering around the map. Yeah, that's a carrier. Uh, for, you know, carrier landing purposes. For instance, with the F-18. Okay, are you ready for the fourth row? 
A carrier landing with the AM-225 is not advisable. Okay, now when we get in the fourth row, we're going to open the IMU operate circuit breaker. And what that means is that we're going to lose the capability to watch your CDUs. So we're not going to be able to see your attitude. Therefore, we will not be able to advise you on which antenna to select for communications. The way we want you to handle that is to turn the limb uplink squelch off and uh, when you hear the noise, switch antennas. <laughs> when you hear the noise, switch we'll antennas. To, uh, see you switch antennas and it's going to take us about three to five minutes to establish a lock on again after you switch. After each time that you switch antennas, we will initiate a voice check. Uh, basically, uh, when you see the earth out the window, you can be on the forward antenna. And when the moon's out in the window, use the aft antenna. You copy? <laughs> well, this sort of thing can't make any astronaut feel particularly good, but... RCS system AB dash one. Open quads one through four. Under ECS, the only change is under glycol pumps, close auto transfer. Under COM, the only change is open VHFA receiver. So the original intended trip with this uh, to ATCA, I mean on this leg, would have been nearly double the time that we're going to have for this flight. Okay, we're turning too far to the north. Um, yeah, but with the reduction to Ericsson Air Base instead, it should be about an hour instead of what would have been two hours. So, nominal flight time. The next plane will have to do more work, but it's a B-1B. So hopefully we can get it going reasonably fast. Okay, what else do you have for me? 
Okay, panel 16, that's on uh, page power dash seven. Top row, the only change is under RCS system B, open PQGS displays. Over. Well, I mean, it looks like we're going down pretty precipitously, but we're not. Um, this is a case where, because the wing is tilted quite a lot, we are probably going to be a little bit nose down for most of the flight. But we'll see how we trim out. But still, I'm still trying to trim it. Of course, uh, if you're not aware, I don't use autopilot for any of these flights in the series. So it's all just trimming. Transmitter receiver closed. S band antenna open. PMP closed. TV open. Under ECS displays open. Glycol pump secondary open. No, it's not going to be this nose down, though. Cabin fan control open. Cabin repress closed. And all the next four close also. Uh, read back. Okay, we have displays open. SE audio closed. BHMA uh, transmitter open. BHMB receiver open. Power amp's going to be open. Transmitter receiver closed. s band antenna open. TMP closed, TV open, display is open, next three are open, cabin repress is closed, and all the rest closed. That's affirmative, Jim. And in row four, under heaters, we want them all, correction, we want all the quad heaters open. Correction, we want all the quad heaters closed. All the we want displays open. S-band antenna closed to avoid a master alarm. Camera, sequence camera open. And under EPS, we want displays open. DC bus bolt closed. Inverter two open. SNECA closed. SNECA control open. Descent ECA closed. Descent ECA control closed. Translator bus tie closed. We want the cross tie bus open. The bell loads closed. Bat feed ties closed. How do you read? Another reason we will be pointing down is because we're not carrying a very heavy load, so we don't need nearly as much lift as the plane normally gets. Why are we keeping 
allowed the track closed, or they could be open. Negative, we have the uh, lighting breakers all closed. Control the lighting with the switches and the rheostats, over. Can't really see the land behind us anymore. We won't actually be crossing uh, into the Western Hemisphere during this flight. Roll four under RCS system A and B dash two quad heaters. You notice that we've closed those circuit breakers, but what we so that is worth noting is to on panel three turn the RCS A B dash two quad switches one two three and four off over and uh, we're going to watch your uh, quad temps for you and when we need to uh, warm them up a little bit we'll tell you to uh, throw those four switches on on panel three Jim, as far as we can tell right now, the PTC uh, looks as good as any PTC we've ever seen in the CSM, so we're going to go with what we've got. Okay. Okay, and if you turn over the page in Power 8, uh, we have the uh, spacecraft functions remaining to you. We've got low bit rate TM. However, we don't have any VHF. We have Siwi. We have glycol pumps. Siwi, I have no have idea what that is. We have cabin repress for you. And uh, standby and attitude control here. Uh, no, no, we're going up too much. Okay, and uh, attitude control, we'll have. Another thing I have to uh, adjust for is the fact that the camera is tilted. And uh, for normal usage. We want to have a so it looks like we're pointing down when we're not. That's use. yeah. That's read? another thing. Okay, for emergency we have the uh, hard overs, and uh, for normal use requires a 15-minute request to get the heaters on. That's affirmative. This is awkward. Okay, this Jim, view is that, best. Uh, concludes our power down procedure. Or we're waiting for you to get with it. Okay, Jack, we'll start. I sure hate to lose the thing. I sure hope that procedure for the mid course is a good one. It is. Up oh, there's another. That's another carrier. I, I bet it just spawns carriers for you all the time.
Okay, Jim, on uh, the four quad heater breakers, uh, we want you to leave them closed. And we'll operate the heaters with the uh, switches on panel three, over. Okay. Well, would like some clouds around here. That would have been a little bit better. No. It is okay, apparently cool, real world uh, weather, yeah, so four, clear day out. We're more or less stabilizing now. Wind-wise, um, that's a crosswind. I mean, yeah, that's just not going to be helpful. Actually, our uh, ground speed is a little bit, seems to be benefiting from the wind somehow. But the map doesn't make it look like that's likely. No problem, Jim. Uh, go ahead and open them. Track and flood. That's all right. Okay. Track and flood are open. Now, why don't you go through that, Jack, and make sure the yeah. I had a ring. Okay, I'll take that. Okay, and uh, Jack, my only other uh, concern now is uh, the CO2 rise of the spacecraft. Uh, I guess you're keeping a handle on that. That's affirmed, uh, Jim. We uh, have you up to 10.6 now, and uh, we're willing to go a little higher on that. We have uh, another cartridge, and we have a procedure for uh, making the command module cartridges up. We'll pass that on later. Right. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I just want to make sure that you, uh, are, are they gonna uh, that uh, you, we just don't want to go to sleep here and forget about the rise in CO2. Roger, uh, we're watching it for you. We have it here. It's now 10.7, and uh, we have a medical go to 15 millimeters. Okay, Jim, uh, we estimate we've got uh, one more hour on the primary cartridge and uh, six or seven hours on the secondary. Okay, fine. That's a spare primary cartridge back there, too, isn't it? So that's good for another uh, hour. And uh, you're right, Jim. We got another uh, primary cartridge back there behind the S and engine cover. Right. Yeah, we know. Thank you. Hey, Jack, uh, we just thought uh, it was about time you got a LEM checkout. But he's given it me inert. Of course, I'll give him my command module, too, which is rather inert right now, too. Now you got to walk before you run, you know. This is Apollo Control at 82 hours, 30 minutes. Here in Mission Control at this time, we're in the process of completing a shift change. Flight Director Milton Wendler and his uh, maroon team of flight controllers replacing Flight Director Gene Kranz and the white team. Uh, on board the spacecraft, uh, the flight plan calls for the uh,
two of the crewmen, uh, Commander Jim Lovell and Command Module Pilot Jack Swigert, to begin a uh, five-hour rest period shortly. All three crewmen are scheduled to be uh, eating uh, at this time, or uh, to have uh, finished by now. The lunar module has been essentially powered down, and at the present time, uh, we're showing a total current uh, on the lunar module, uh, ranging between 14 and uh, 15 or 16 amps, which is about what was expected. Aquarius Houston. Aquarius Houston, over. Roger, uh, for your information, You're Jack, right, uh, all of our uh, analysis is based on uh, power down to 14 amps, but uh, we're reading on you right now 12.3, and so we're better off than we were uh, in our analysis. That sounds good. Jack, I thought you were going to get the sleep shift where there wasn't any excitement. Well, I tried, but I didn't make it. I thought you're supposed to be sleeping now. Hello. Fredo is uh, getting something to eat, and Jim is uh, starting to back out, so I'm taking the car in here until Fred gets done. Okay. Jack Swigert reporting that uh, Jim Lovell at the present time is resting. Uh, Fred Hayes is getting something to eat. And when he, when Fred finishes eating, uh, uh, Jack Swigert is scheduled to get a bit of rest. Fred, I just, uh, are you ready to take over? Uh, maybe we're, I mean, the camera's fooling me. Maybe we're relatively level. No, I mean, I'm trying to figure that out based on the horizon, given that the camera, for reasons I don't understand, is tilted. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure it'd be fixed on a restart of X-Plane 11, but darn it, once I get started flying, I'm flying. We're about a third of the way there. Uh, looks okay. like we're running a little bit slow. Mainly because of the time it took to get up here, I suppose. Oh, we do have some clouds, it looks like. Also a bit of moon there. So the scenery is getting a little bit more diversified. So of the blue expanse behind us. It's possible there's just no weather station in this particular area. That's, and as we get closer to the Aleutian Islands, there are weather stations. Okay, Fred, I can't hear any more in kind of background noise. I assume that, uh, I think 
I heard Jack tell you what we're going to do about come uh, uplink squelch off. Uh, you'll uh, take care of the antennas because we can't see your attitude. We'll give you a voice check when we come up. It'll take us three to five minutes to come up. And to make it astronaut proof, uh, when you see the Earth, use a forward antenna. When you see the moon, use the aft one. Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, I see the Earth, so I've uh, very uh, wisely uh, shifted to forward. Good boy. And uh, Jack is still here. Still here, Fred. Okay, when I was upstairs uh, just a minute ago, I uh, I noticed the, what appeared to be some new mini from down uh, the service module way. Uh, I noticed it out uh, window one, and also saw one chunk of uh, metal, loose metal, about uh, four inches uh, square that was uh, tumbling around uh, silver in color. It looked like it had come from uh, somewhere down in the service module. Okay, uh, you saw some bending out window uh, one? I Go ahead. Okay, uh, that's where uh, when I happened to be looking, the lighting was set to have showed up back there. And uh, what reminded me of it was I'm looking out the limb window now, and I see uh, a good part of the new star field that's created first. about a thousand little sparklies out here. Okay, so you're uh, seeing uh, some venting out window one and you saw a four inch square piece of loose metal uh, which was silver and uh, uh, are you still seeing the venting or has it uh, zeroed out now? Uh, I don't know, I, I left upstairs, I'm down on the left now. Jack, uh, I guess so. Uh, Jack goes up, he can take a look and let me know. Okay, I'll uh, think about switching aft here directly. I see the moon, and uh, the moon uh, looks uh, pretty good, Jack, so I guess our PTC uh, still doing pretty good. Okay, and uh, we won't have any comm delay uh, if PTC stays good. Yeah, sure enough, the moon is getting smaller. Good, and uh, we want to ask you another question about the venting. Uh, is this, uh, would you... Uh, suppose some new venting or is this uh, venting that you just uh, hadn't, uh, that's been going on all the time but which you hadn't looked at recently? Uh, I, I can't really say, Jack. We've been so tied up uh, down on the limb, I guess we kind of forgot about the other half. Uh, but I've been up the upstairs several times and had particularly noticed any uh, flow by the windows before, so I, uh, my first assumption was that it was some uh, new, uh, new venting. It really wasn't uh, it very heavy. Okay, copy, thank you. And uh, Jack's going up to take a look now. Okay. Yeah, I've heard this venting thing a few times, so this makes me... And this gives me a lot of deja vu too, so. Based on uh, amperage usage of uh, 14 amps, and uh, we're using only 12.3, so we're a little fat on our analysis. Very good way to be. And uh, we're in okay, a. Yeah, this uh, Aquarius has really been a winner. Winner. Well, that's one of several, and uh, we want to tell you uh, something that I told Jim earlier, and uh, that concerns control. Uh, right now, you have uh, control in hard over if you need it, but when we go to some normal control mode, since we have the, uh, the quad heaters off, we want to have a 15-minute uh, notice for a attitude control request. Over. Okay, uh, Jack, uh, offhand, I can't imagine that since we got the platform uh, power down, uh, why we need to worry about any instantaneous uh, control. Uh, but uh, at any rate, uh, we need 15 minutes warm up with the heaters before we can start using thrusters. 
Right, and uh, another thing we've done is to uh, pull some your ECS and EPS display breakers, and uh, so. If, but we've let your caution and warning powered up, so if uh, you get uh, uh, ECS type or EPS caution and warning, uh, you have to power up those meters with the uh, display breakers. And uh, we are watching for you your PIPA temperatures, your ASA temp, your propellant temperatures, except for the dips propellant, and we're watching your quad temps for you. Okay, uh, that's, that's very good, Jack. You're watching them, uh, that's good enough. And uh, everybody's fine at home now, Lago. Fred, your uh, CO2 is building up. Uh, it's at 11.3 on our gauge, and uh, we've got a medical go up to 15 millimeters, at which time we'll switch over to secondary. Looks like uh, we've got plenty of lithium hydroxide, about 192 hours, including the uh, CSM uh, cartridges, and uh, as you know, we've got a uh, way to use those, and uh, as soon as we get it written down in some uh, Good words, why uh, we'll pass that along. You might be able to make one. Okay. Yeah, we'll sure give her a try. And yeah, the side still doesn't look particularly uh, good, unfortunately. And half, uh, of, uh, Roger, and uh, I have a, a flight plan update. Uh, when you get a time to copy it sometime, we'll pass it along. Uh, there's no hurry on it. Okay, stand by one, Jack, uh, back down. Okay, uh, Jack just came back and he said it's still coming out. It's coming out only on the commander's side. So he saw it out the same window I did, window one. And it's between the uh, minus Y and minus uh, Z axis. Okay, and of course, it's definitely a service module, which was uh, which was my impression too. Okay, so uh, you're sure it's a service module? And of course, the thing we're interested in knowing is it uh, something that uh, is residual from before, or is it uh, something new? And if you have any ideas about that, why uh, we'd sure like to have them. There's something flying in front of us pretty high up and fast, but I don't know what that is. It's too far away to be on the map. Yeah. some artifacting on the clouds. Don't know why that happens. Okay, um, Jack's got, uh, one with the Only when I tilt the can- no, that seems to be uh, around the edge right there. Oh, some camera angles. I get it, some I don't. Interesting. Okay, and 
I copy the I copy the 250 millimeter. The Rizzo is available, but I didn't get what other one is. Okay, I got my uh, Hasselblad surface camera down on a limb here, handy too, camera one. And uh, Jack, if we're gonna uh, do any picture taking out uh, the command module uh, windows, I think we ought to do that either pretty quick or uh, hold up till uh, Jim and Jack get their rest done. I concur with that. Okay, Fred, uh, we're not going to uh, bother the skipper up there. We won't be taking any pictures out of the uh, command module window until after rest period. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 83 hours, two minutes. Uh, Fred Hayes has the watch at the present time in the command mod, or in the lunar module, rather, uh, while Jim Lovell and uh, Jack Swigert attempt to get some rest in the command module. Uh, the flight plan calls for a five-hour rest period for both the commander and the command module pilot. Uh, recapping briefly, uh, Fred Hayes remarks, after coming back to the LEM from the command module where he'd been getting something to eat, Fred reported that uh, he'd observed some venting apparently from the service module and had also seen a four-inch square piece of metal, which he described as silver in color, float by the window of the command module. He a was piece of metal float by. One window, which is the uh, viewed from inside the uh, command module is the window uh, to the left of the commander's couch and the far left window. Uh, Hayes was asked if he felt the uh, venting was something new or if it was residual venting from the original event which had uh, caused the loss of power and oxygen to the service module. Uh, he did not know and we also uh, have not determined uh, here on the ground uh, whether it is, whether uh, this is an event associated uh, with the original uh, loss of power from the service module or whether it is something new. And that's being evaluated at this time. Uh, Hayes said he did feel definitely that the event was coming from the service module, that the piece of uh, metal that he'd seen float by was from the service module and that the venting was from the service module. Flight Director uh, Milton Wendler, after uh, reviewing the situation, elected to wait until after the uh, commander, Jim Lovell, and command module pilot Jack Swigert had completed their rest period before attempting to get back into the command module and uh, photograph the, uh, the venting and whatever uh, pieces might be visible out the window. This is Apollo Control at 83 hours, 11 minutes. A change of shift press briefing is being planned uh, to begin in about 10 minutes at 12.35 uh, a.m. in the main auditorium at the Houston News Center. The participants in the press conference will be White Team Flight Director Gene Kranz and astronaut Tony England. And repeating the time for that change of shift briefing is tentatively planned for 12.35 a.m., about 10 minutes from now. Okay, Fred, uh, for your information, your CO2 reading on board is a little higher than what we're reading here on the ground. And so when it gets to 15, yeah, near meter, switch to secondary. 
and uh, we'd like to get a status uh, about every 30 minutes. We'll give you a call on that. Uh, but uh, just to let us know we're still thinking about you, we'd like you to go bio biomed right, please. Okay, going uh, biomed uh, right. Hey, and how do you read me on this uh, com mode on base band? Five square, Fred, help me. We're still here, Fred. How's it going? Okay. Uh, my uh, CO2 reading is now uh, 413. Say again what it is. Oh, just uh, close below uh, 13. Okay, just below 13 and. Uh, just for your information, uh, we've got uh, people working on uh, several subjects. Wow, working there's hardly the, any uh, wind now. Mid course coming up. Determine uh, our control system and uh, how to do it with the control system we uh, select. What we should do about the alignment. We've got the LMS and uh, a couple of crews cranked up working on that. And uh, we're also working on our entry, how and when we ought to. Uh, activate the CSM and uh, we're working on the CSM systems uh, status uh, tomorrow sometime we're going to uh, yeah turning the command back module back on people, uh, is a tricky business some, uh, they have to do it right before re-entry at earth the, uh, and, and you and know uh, then it's on battery power because they can't use the fuel cells so they have to wait as long as like possible but then if they don't get it right, then they're sort of in trouble, and then they have to separate from the lunar module and the busted service module. Interesting business. I should remind people that there is ApolloInRealTime.org, a website that has much more audio and information available. Uh, it has the mission control audio sequence. This is just the PAO loop with the public affairs officer, Capcom, astronauts. And uh, that's it. So there's a lot more on that site for Apollo 11, Apollo 13, and Apollo 17. You can play it at any point. It's not just for the 50th anniversary or anything. So, although, of course, the anniversaries are ideal times to listen in, but still, you can set the playhead at any time. sad reflecting on the fact that they didn't get to do the landing at Frau Morrow. Okay, I'm uh, reading on my monitor here, Fred, that you're uh, 16,214 miles away from the moon, moving at uh, about 4,500 feet a sec. Okay. Hey, 
sounds of all the um, work that is going on and is still going on. Uh, this flight's uh, probably a lot uh, bigger test than the uh, system on the ground than up here. Yeah, you've been uh, you've been working it out a little bit. Yeah, I really got a tough job right now uh, switching off. Here. down here is 100% optimistic. Uh, looks like we're on the upside of the whole thing now. Yeah, I guess uh, we better be in pretty good shape. Uh, um, I think for ourselves rested uh, for that uh, entry day. I think that's going to be a pretty busy one. Right, and uh, we're working on uh, procedures for that. Uh, Ken's been doing quite a bit of work on uh, getting ready for entry. Oh no, the wind good. seems to be against us. Yeah, it's sort of turning that way. But we're getting closer to our destination. I think we've heard this bit before. So another problem is that there are a lot of tapes. And we just went across a boundary between one file and another. And I, the, sort of, the files are six hours long. And I have to hope that they don't... And the tapes aren't. That one file incorporates a whole bunch of tapes. Uh, so, or reels or whatever and I have to rely on them not accidentally repeating one of those reels or tapes on the next file but I'm not sure I think there's repetition here and uh, for your information all of our uh, numbers are uh, based on uh, amperage usage of uh, 14 amps and uh, we're using let me listen ahead Swigert attempt to get some rest in the command module. Hmm. Okay, uh, Jack, uh, offhand, I can't imagine that since we got the platform uh, powered down, uh, why we need to worry about any instantaneous uh, control. I don't know, I'll just leave it be. Uh, but, uh, at any rate, uh, we need 15 minutes warm up with the heaters before we can start using thrusters. Right, and uh, another thing we've done is to uh, pull some, your ECS and EPS display breakers and uh, so, but we've left your caution and warning powered up, so if uh, you get uh, I'll be doubly uh, sure to move the marker. So I've got all these edited tapes in a in the video editor. Well, it's a video editor even though it's just audio in this case. And I'm just moving a marker for where I left off. So I will make sure to move the marker before I close this okay, uh, video. That's, that's very good, Jack. You're watching them, uh, that's good enough. And uh, everybody's fine at home now, Lago. Great. And, uh, Fred, your uh, CO2 is building up it's at 11.3 on our gauge, and uh, we've got a medical go up to 15 millimeters, at which time we'll switch over to secondary. Looks like uh, we've got plenty of lithium hydroxide, about 192 hours, including the uh, CSM uh, cartridges, and uh, as you know, we've got a uh, way to use those, and uh, as soon as we get it written down in some uh, 
good words by uh, we'll pass that along. You might be able to make one. Okay. Yeah, we'll sure give her a try. And I'm showing on board about uh, 12 and a half uh, millimeters of uh, mercury. Roger, and uh, I have a, a flight plan update. Uh, when you get a time to copy it sometime, we'll pass it along. Uh, there's no hurry on it. Okay, stand by one, Jack. Uh, back down. Okay, uh, Jack just came back and he said it's still coming out. It's coming out only on the commander's side. So he saw it out the same window I did, window one. And it's between the uh, minus Y and minus uh, Z axis. Okay, and of course, it's definitely a service module, which was uh, which was my impression too. Okay, so uh, you're sure it's a service module? And of course, the thing we're interested in knowing is it uh, something that uh, is residual from before, or is it uh, something new? And if you have any ideas about that, why uh, we'd sure like to have them. got a line in the clouds right in front of us. Don't know what causes it. Wish it didn't. It's not like there's a whole lot of scenery being loaded right now. Well, just fixed it after I complained, but still. It's not like the video card has a whole lot to do at the moment. Okay, Fred, uh, we're not going to uh, bother the skipper up there. We won't be taking any pictures out of the uh, command module window until after rest period. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 83 hours, two minutes. Uh, Fred Hayes has the watch at the present time in the command mod or in the lunar module rather, uh, while Jim Lovell and uh, 
Jack Swigert attempt to get some rest in the command module. Uh, the flight plan calls for a five-hour rest period for both the commander and the command module pilot. Uh, we're uh, briefly, approaching Atu Island. Remarks, there it is, uh, finally on the map there. The Atu Island is the big island near did, the uh, airbase we're going to land at, but oddly enough the airbase is not on Atu Island. So I think we should start descending though. Four inch square piece of metal, which he described as silver in color, float by the window of the command module. He was looking out the number one window, which is the uh, viewed from inside the uh, command module, is the window uh, to the left of the commander's couch, uh, the far left window. Hayes was asked if he felt the uh, vetting was something new or if it was residual vetting from the original event which had uh, caused the loss of power and oxygen to the service module. Uh, he did not know and we also uh, have uh, not determined uh, here on the ground uh, whether, it is, whether uh, this is an event associated uh, with the original a loss of power from the service module, or whether it is something new. And that's being evaluated at this time. Uh, Hayes said he did feel definitely that the uh, event was coming from the service module, that the piece of uh, metal that he'd seen float by was from the service module, and that the venting was from the service module. Flight Director uh, Milton Wendler, after uh, reviewing the situation, elected to wait until after the uh, commander, Jim Lovell, and command module pilot Jack Swigert had completed their rest period before attempting to get back into the command module and uh, photograph the, uh, the venting and whatever uh, pieces might be visible out the window. This is Apollo Control at 83 hours, 11 minutes. A change of shift press briefing is being planned uh, to begin in about 10 minutes at 12.35 uh, a.m. in the main auditorium at the Houston News Center. The participants in the press conference will be White Team Flight Director Gene Kranz and astronaut Tony England. And repeating the time for that change of shift briefing is tentatively planned for 12.35 a.m., about 10 minutes from now. Okay, Fred, uh, for your information, your CO2 reading on board is a little higher than what we're reading here on the ground. And so when it gets to 15, yeah, on your meter, switch to secondary. And uh, we'd like to get a status uh, about every 30 minutes. We'll give you a call on that. Uh, but uh, just to let us know, we're still thinking about you. We'd like you to go bi biomed right, nope. please. Still can't see the island. Or was it? Maybe it's further to the right. Okay, going uh, biomed uh, right. Hey, and how do you read me on this uh, top mode on base band? Five square, Fred, help me. We're still here, Fred. How's it going? Okay, uh, my uh, CO2 reading is now uh, 13. Oh, a little bit fast. Say again what it is. Oh, just uh, close below uh, 13. Okay, just below 13, and uh, just for your information, uh, we've got uh, people working on uh, several subjects. We're working on the uh, mid course coming up, determine. Uh, our control system and uh, how to do it with the control system we uh, select what we should do about the alignment we've got the LMS and uh, 
couple of crews cranked up working on that. And uh, we're also working on our entry, how and when we ought to uh, activate the CSM. And uh, we're working on the CSM systems uh, status. Uh, tomorrow sometime we're going to uh, have a main bus B checkout. So uh, we've got a lot of people uh, swinging pretty hard here and I've got some uh, f-stop settings for you for the uh, lunar surface camera at uh, 1 250th we'd like you to take targets of opportunity each picture uh, use three f-stops because we don't know exactly which one is going to work oh best. that's so a lot of clouds now four, five six and eight at 1 250th with a surface camera copy uh, there's a Patu okay. here, that's uh, another one, but that's just a Coast Guard thing. Shemya is the island with our PASY base. Oh, there's a there's Atu Island, shrouded in the clouds. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to turn the camera there. Not bad look to the landscape. A bit difficult to assess. Well, everybody down here is I'm somewhat worried about how cloudy like the area around the airport's there. gonna be. Very good. 
How's it going, Fred? Okay, just fine. Okay, uh, we're considering a uh, mid-course correction at 104 hours, uh, about 20 hours from now, 18 hours from now, and it's only seven feet per second. Uh, and the other option is to uh, keep PTC up since uh, we may not be able to get back into it again and uh, delay it. So uh, that's the type of thing we're uh, thinking about. But uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, you're pretty much uh, right in the middle of the fairway there. And uh, our present tracking uh, with no mid-course uh, has you uh, with a gamma of 7.11 as opposed to 6.51. So you're already in the corridor. You're just a half a degree uh, between the center and the outer limit and we're going to tweak that up. Okay, that uh, sounds good. And uh, we don't, uh, we think there might have been a misunderstanding earlier on uh, potable water. Uh, don't worry about drinking water. Drink all you want. There's plenty of it. There's 38 pounds. I've and, definitely uh, commented on that, this uh, particular you, uh, use some of the, bit uh, of audio before. But I can't remember whether it was live stream or not. Hopefully. Okay, uh, yeah, we went up and, uh, it looks like the stock texture is here. I can't quite tell though. But no, that's probably the stock textures. Real life doesn't quite work out that way. Also explains the sharpness and because I don't think they pass, you know, aerial photography of this island very often. I don't know though. It's possible it's for the scenery. I mean, it doesn't seem that repetitive, does it? And uh, I assume that Jack is up there sleeping now, too, right? Uh, I don't know. The. No, uh, I lean towards that being the stock stuff. Tough to say. Oh no, a wobbly PTC. Okay, let's descend further now. See the map. And there we have PSY actually directly in our flight path. That's convenient. 
probably turn towards that. I don't know if I'm gonna descend fast enough to just fly straight in or anything. Basically occupies the entire island. Well, yeah, I'll give it a go. We, uh, have decided to use uh, a canister, and uh, you know that the uh, liquid-cooled garment has a bag around it that we think we can use too, or that we know we can use. We've tried it. So what you have is the uh, a bag within a bag, and inside that is a liquid-cooled garment. The bag that is closest to the liquid-cooled garment is the one that we need. And we've got two of them. And uh, then, of course, we got to use uh, uh, some... Eh, I think uh, I might be optimistic and, uh, to try a fly uh, straight in. We're definitely going too fast. So we'll fly over it and then come around. Like data file, timeline book, or uh, something like that. And uh, just using those materials, we can make this uh, jury rig canister. So... That island uh, close to us, to our right right now, is Alaid Island, A-L-A-I-D. We're very careful about uh, where we cut it. We can make a pretty good rig. Okay. Looks like we'll have to uh, use that bag over again, though, because we only got two of them. And I expect that we'll have to make more than two of these canisters up. Roger. Yeah, that's stock textures. Pretty sure. Been a while since I've seen the stock textures, so you know. Fred, in about four minutes, uh, we're going to hand you over to a different uh, communication site, and it's going to take us about a minute or so to. Even now, I'm doubting it, though. So, well, it seems too varied, isn't it? After, whoops, cloud stuff. After a late island is Nizki Island. This is Nizki Island in front of us. Next island is the one with Ericsson Air Base. Raj, maybe Air Station. Uh, you're coming in better now, too. And, uh, for your information, uh, Jack, I'm uh, just fixing to uh, tear into some uh, beef and gravy and uh, other assorted goodies. Oh, uh, briefly through the clouds, we saw it. There it is. At this, uh, at this moment, uh, who do you think is the uh, commander? I remember this bit <laughs> and saying he's got a point there. Gosh darn it. If I was him, I'd make you sign out everything you ate so I'd know. Okay, let's go around. Okay, well, that's not very constructive. All right, let's go into the cockpit. Oh, we're going a bit fast. See if it goes the other way. 
these guys down here are saying that they knew it all the time. This is Apollo Control at 84 hours, 8 minutes. During oh, the change of shift uh, briefing, Capcom Jack Lausma uh, kept Oops, up sync rate is a little bit high. Constant, uh, stream it makes of communications a good point. With Fred Hayes, who is on duty. Uh, uh, who is on duty in the uh, command module. Uh, in the uh, lunar module, rather. And uh, I'd like to re, uh, recap for you some of the things that uh, were discussed uh, during that period of time. Okay, well, I guess we'll uh, get set up, gear down. Lausma advised Hayes that the mid-course correction being considered notch. at this time is a 7 foot per second maneuver, which would occur at 104 hours. Uh, the other option, which... Uh, sometime when you're not too busy chewing on that uh, beef, how about telling us what the CO2 reads? Game's paused a bit. Or wait. Uh, oh, okay. Discussed, uh, with Fred Hayes, For some reason, it wanted me to click. This is a new phenomenon. Uh, the other option being to uh, delay the mid-course correction. Uh, if that were done, it would not be necessary to uh, stop the passive thermal control mode, which the lunar module is in at this time. Uh, and that is being considered, but no decision has been made. The uh, carbon dioxide levels in the lunar module were also discussed, and a procedure was uh, passed up uh, to Hayes for keeping tabs on the rising uh, CO2 level and for changing to the backup lithium hydroxide canister when the level uh, reaches uh, 15 millimeters of mercury. Uh, ah, more clouds. Partial pressure. The uh, surgeon uh, also recommended that uh, the onboard reading be used. Oh, for uh, this air brakes are causing high sink rate. Reading, uh, would be somewhat more accurate, although we've been uh, reading about the same thing on the ground uh, ah. as Hayes has been reporting from the spacecraft. And uh, last report, the uh, I've been thrown uh, off. Of, uh, CO2 was uh, at about 13. Wow, this is serious stuff here. At one point, here. Hayes reported that the passive thermal control appeared to be degrading a bit. He said that uh, every time the spacecraft uh, rotated one complete revolution, the Earth would appear to be a bit lower in the window, and the Moon appeared to be moving higher in the window. That's and a lot of cloud. I heard Hayes report later that uh, there may have been some sort of a wobble in the passive thermal control, and that the uh, Earth and Moon were now back in the proper position in the window. <laughs> so that's another uh, area that we'll continue to watch. Outside we can and, see, uh, from certain angles we can see, right over the base we can't the see. Thermal control mode I'm going to try turning so the other way around. We've also had a communications handover, uh, handing over from the... Let's just stay low site here. ...at Goldstone, California, to the tracking site at uh, Honeysuckle Creek, Australia. Yeah, it appears the uh, wobble is going the, uh, the other way, Jack, because the uh, Earth is uh, now rising in the moon, so it's starting to get lower in the window. Roger, uh, could you give us an LPD number uh, periodically? LPD number? Yeah. Good question. Oh. If you could give it uh, two or three revs in a row, uh, then we could uh, predict where it's going and maybe help us uh, set it up again if we have to. 
I think it's just this version that I have to click in the cockpit to reset it. I don't know. Something has changed. There's the runway. We can see it right now. Now if I line up with it, are we going to be able to see it? I don't know. Last time around, we were down pretty low without being able to see it. Okay, the center of the Earth has uh, just gone by at a LPD number of uh, four. Roger, LPD four, center of the Earth. I think LPD must be landing something. It's, it's some sort of angle that they're okay, measuring. LPD 21, is that the center of the moon, you say? Using that as a reference. I think there was like a scale on the window or something. But I don't know what LPD actually stands for. And uh, Fred, we're doing a little better on our water than we had anticipated. Uh, our numbers oh, were, uh, nope. More clouds now. No, nope, sink rate again. Let's get a little bit more yeah. flaps. The altimeter here is on the instrument panel. It's not the same as what's up in the upper left, and I can't figure out how to change it. Oh, uh, no, there's the barometer gauges over there. It's not on the altimeter. Ah. Uh, that's the wrong way. Maybe they'll make some more Nah, maybe it's not the right time to do that. <laughs> I'll just use the upper left. Let's try. Oh, sinking. Okay, uh, it's not quite right still. Okay. Oh, too slow. Good thing we are light. That's part of the reason the dynamics are what they are. It wouldn't fly very well at 130 knots if it was loaded up, but it's pretty much empty. It's obviously not going to be ideal, is it? It's runway heading 10. That's not 10. Okay, uh, so far we haven't identified what the sparklers are or what is bending. Uh, too far, too far, too far. Uh. Yeah, I gotta, gotta think of filling uh, that 
Ah, uh, we're off again. How you feeling, Fred? Oh, as soon as I uh, come down this uh, great drink and uh, great fruit uh, orange drink, I think I'll uh, be in pretty good shape. It doesn't really want to go down right now. Let's see. How much uh, sleep did you get between the burn and uh, the time you got up for this exercise? Oh, I uh, guess it made about four hours, Jack. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Which burn are you talking about? That's great. <laughs> Just made. About 400 the feet the uh, above the ground is where we can see stuff. Oh, no, I, well, if uh, that's I how it is, that's that, how it is. Uh, Hope there's a ground effect or something. That was a TV show right before yeah, things went sure wrong, of course. Designator on the LEM window. Uh, Landing point designator. The there we go. Uh, passive thermal control mode. That's LPD. Degrading a bit. He said that uh, every time the spacecraft rotated, the Earth would appear to be a bit higher in the window and the Moon a bit lower. And uh, a short while after that, he said that uh, it may have corrected itself that the Earth and Moon appeared to be in about the right place. Uh, so. Mission Control asked him to try and give us the uh, degree Third readings times on the to charm or uh, not for a couple of revolutions as the Earth and Moon rotated by, and we keep a little closer watch on it and see if if there was any significant change. Charlie said to say hello. There are too many Charlies, come on.
the bearded one. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I'm turning too much. Hey, tell Charlie I'll uh, be that back down there personally to thank him for this visit. Uh. Sure will. I did. Okay. Uh, well, at least we can see the runway and it's in front of us. Don't try uh, this, this in real life at, uh, kind of thing. Hours, 48 minutes. The Charlie who was referred to a few moments ago in the conversation between Jack Lausma and uh, Fred Hayes uh, was not astronaut uh, Charles Duke, but uh, rather one Charlie Mars who looks after the lunar modules at uh, Cape Kennedy prior to launch. Up. At this time, the uh, flight plan that we have on one of our display boards here in Mission Control shows that... Uh, okay. Jim uh, well, we're here. That was Jack tough. Uh, have okay. A little bit more than uh, three hours remaining in there sleep period. Nope, oh, nope, that's uh, this view. The flight plan is relatively open also from 87 hours to 88 hours uh, which would indicate that uh, uh, there might be a bit of flexibility. In Sorry, the flickering that, uh, is the clouds period. sometimes. Oh, that's more maneuverable than I thought it was. Why is why are things occupying all the parking slots? Oh, I guess there's some over there. How'd you like to spend a week on an aircraft carrier getting back? Okay. Well, we are here at Ericsson Air Station, and we'll be moving on next time in a B-1B, and we'll see how that goes. Let me pause the audio and make sure to put my marker into new position, as I promised. I'll save that. And uh, with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.